you know, in late season, it gets really tough man managing time because the days are so short. It's dark here at 4.30. And uh, I had to go into the office today like most days. If I want to make it out hunting, it's a race. And uh, I got a spot in mind. That's not a long ways out, but it's not a short ways either. And I'm trying to race there. And I think I'm going to get there about one hour before closing. Maybe even less than an hour. But the majority of deer we see in this area are within the last half hour, 40 minutes. So if I can set up real quiet, I might get there in time to get a prime hunt and I've got a lot of spots to hunt if I blow the spot I blow the spot but sitting at home saying there ain't enough time don't put deer on the wall so I'm heading back to an island I'm really familiar with I've had a lot of good luck on this island and I have not hunted it yet this year with a bow. We've been out there with gun, but not bow. So cross your fingers and knock your arrows. We're going in. Overcast, cool, nice day for hunting. We'll get right up in there, right towards the tip of that island. They bet up in the cattails up there, where those trees are. Hopefully I don't fall through this ice, it looks pretty thin. So far, so good. It's been pretty warm lately. Wouldn't doubt if there's a hot spot on here. Just two teeth holding it on. Greatest bracket ever made. So I'm on the island, I got set up. It took me a little longer than I thought. It took me about 16 minutes. Normally I can set up in 10. But I got up here, I didn't hear anything take off. Minimal noise, I got a little wind cover. I got some good bedding out in there. There's a point here they come out on. And right in here they drop in through a lot. And I can see, uh, uh, it's gonna be hard for the camera to see, but there's a really good rub there. A couple rubs over there, some rubs in that brush. And then there's a rub line coming out over there that I saw coming in here, and a trail going through right there. Um, most of the ones I've seen come through here in the past come through here or along there. Um, that might be a little difficult shot, but I'll get an arrow through it somehow. But right here is good. And, uh, man, we've gotten set up in a nick of time. Hopefully something shows. So, I think I got this upper island pretty well covered. It's 30 yards from me to each side, and the trails aren't that far apart. The furthest trails are like 20. So, if something comes through, if it doesn't spot me in this bare naked tree, I got a chance. But if it does see me, it'll see the cat. Is it a cat? There's the cat. There's the cat. Meow. And then when it sees the cat, it'll calm down. That's called calming camel. Cat calming camel. We can market that. We can market that. So I'm gonna get settled in here and just try and wait because a deer could literally show up at any time. We're getting here so late. But uh, I'm ready. One thing about setting up, I had to really calm myself down because I want to get in this tree quick. And uh, if you race, you'll make a clank, you'll make a noise, you'll break a branch. So you gotta go at a steady pace, and it doesn't, you know, going quick doesn't save you but seconds, but it can cost you everything. So, hopefully something comes out of that jungle. There's just tons of beds in there. There's literally, when you walk through there, hundreds of beds that were used this year in there. I am pretty much positive there's deer in there. Whether they come out in time for me to shoot them is a whole other story. 
Buzz. Time's up. No deer. For about a three second glimpse, I saw a squirrel. Otherwise, nothing moved. Long walk out here. Now I'm all sweated up and it's real cold. I still got a good five, six hundred yards to go. This spot here, uh, I had some run-ins with some big bucks earlier this year. And uh, I've been finding some big sheds back here the last few years. I got an idea. There's a good buck living back here late season, so or two. I'm gonna try and sneak back here. It's gonna be really hard. It's a little island. They bed right on the island. I'm hoping they're bedded in the cattails, but there's a good chance I kick them out going in. But you gotta take a chance in order to have any kind of success. So I'm gonna move in there and uh, just go slow. Keep my eyes open. And hopefully I can get in there without blowing anything out and get set up. It was pretty windy when I left. I thought I had some wind cover. But as you can probably hear, the wind has calmed down, and now I'm going to have a hell of a time getting in there quiet. At least I'm not up to my uh, balls in water like usual. But there's a good chance I fall through this stuff too. It's pretty thin. in the cattails and doesn't know I'm here. some really big rubs over there and there's some good ones over there. I think a tree somewhere right here in the middle would work out well. Like right here would give me a good shot over there. A good shot over here. And the wind's perfect. It would be in my face. I think I'm going to try this. I think this is as good as it gets. Right here. Sneak back here. Get up the tree. And then there's that wind I needed to get back here. <laughs> I think it was pretty quiet though. But I really ain't seen a lot of fresh sign. I saw some uh, doe tracks, like 
that were fairly fresh, about a couple hundred yards that way. But not right here. But it snowed last night, and I'm not sure what time. I only cut a couple tracks coming all the way back here, well over a mile back. So it's possible that it snowed right up towards dawn. There was no snow on the ground when I went to bed, and there was snow on the ground when I woke up. There is a lot of rubs in here. Um, if a deer comes through here, I think I got a really good shot from where I'm at. The wind's coming in my face like this. Anyway, I expect the deer to come from there or there, most likely like this. I think they're bedding right now up there on a little high spot and they're going to come in like this. And there's big rubs all the way down this trail here coming in. And that splits off over there, it comes around over here, and I can see rubs over there on that part. There's another trail that comes around over there. There's rubs all over on that, and that comes out right here, comes out over there, and then this trail comes in right here, and my wind's blowing off that way. So, um, I hunted out here once during rut, found a nice shed right there, where that rub is. And, uh, on some sheds uh, a couple years ago under those trees out there at the beds. Um, uh, there's a trail that goes in right here. I don't know if you can make out all those cattails knocked down. But that goes up to the mainland over there. And I had a camera at that mainland. And I got a ton of pictures of a 10-pointer coming out of here. A couple of real good bucks. One of them I know got shot up by the road, though. But uh, that 10-pointer, I, I never heard about anybody shooting. He'd pop up there all the time in daylight coming from here. So one of the problems is I know they're bedding in this thicket here. But now with the leaf cover gone, I don't think they're bedding there no more. I think they're bedding out there, if they're here. So... Hard to say. There ain't a ton of fresh sign, but I did see I did see some sign that wasn't too bad, like some tracks frozen into the ice back there. Well, the only ice has only been around a couple weeks. This ice, so we'll see. We'll set it dark and see what happens. Nothing yet, but I feel like I should have worn a hockey mask. It's Friday the 13th. I should be like Jason or Freddy Krueger or somebody. <laughs> Freddy Krueger. It'd be epic to kill a deer on Friday the 13th. Pretty sure I've never done that. But they're not cooperating. It almost feels like they don't want to die. Get about 30, 40 minutes left. It's getting to be about prime time. Hopefully something shows. There's a buck right over there. He's walking right through there. He was coming in here and got down wind of me. And then took a couple jumps and he's walking through there. Not a shooter though. No, I don't see him at all. just happened to look at the right time. It's actually still pretty early. And actually, I don't know if he actually got my wind, because the wind doesn't, it seems to be way off. But it reacted to something. It was like freaking out and then ran the other way. Not really ran, it took two jumps and then walked. I don't know what that was about. There's a bigger one.
another buck right there. I just saw his antlers moving for a minute. I don't know if he laid down or what, but uh, if you move from that position, I should be able to see him. There's a buck running through the cattails over there. That's the one that was right there. He came out running. I couldn't get the camera on in time to film him, but he ran right through there. And I actually think it's the same buck as the first one. Seen a good look at it. It looks like he snuck around behind me. Until he was downwind. Hopefully, it's Hell, at least I saw a buck, right? If there's something big in here, I'd expect it to come right down this trail. Buzz out of time. Time to get down and take the long walk out of here. I didn't get where I wanted to be. I was going to go all the way to the back of the property and I ran into some people. I think they were looking for sheds or something. They had dogs and they're coming the area. Either that or they shot one and they're searching for it. Um, coming in from the private. I was about a mile and a half back, and by that time I kicked halfway back. It's getting to be sunset already. I was trying to rush and get this set up. I was going to set up in that tree there. I found a whole bunch of tracks coming out right here on that trail and right out of here, meeting right here and then going that way. And uh, the trouble with that tree is when I got in and looked at it, no matter how much I wanted it to work, the deer would have been coming head on at me. So uh, I got here to the side, which is a little bit of a just off wind, but hopefully they come in here before they win me. Um, I got a little bit of a tangle blocking me from over here, but the deer will be right on the other side of it. Hopefully they come from that way and they give me a broadside shot, I don't know. It's, it'd be just about impossible to get a good shot out of here, but I'm going to sit here and I'm going to try. <laughs> it's all I got. It's that or go home. So. Uh, it's almost, uh, you know, it's down to less than an hour to go, so I'm going to pack, uh, put the camera up on the arm. I set the arm up off the ground here. And, uh, get the camera set up and just sit and wait very uncomfortably. Sitting on my knees hurts already, and we just sat down. Well, that's it. Not a single deer moved anywhere in the area. Didn't even hear one go through in the distance. Only had about an hour to hunt tonight, so I just went and sat in the backyard. Holy crap, it was coming at me. While I'm talking.
just went out in the backyard up against the public. I got a little food and blood here right up against the public land. It doesn't get a lot of activity because there's a lot of pressure out here, but there are some deer coming in here. My uh, cell camera went dead about ago and I just finally put batteries in it today so I have no idea what's coming in here but I did see a couple of deer tracks heading down this way so I think some deer are coming in but the, the majority is always after dark so we'll see I mean I got a good cover here they could bed here they could move in daylight and they have all early season this was full of deer every night but uh After gun season, I haven't seen a whole lot. Kind of got surrounded by gun gunfire during gun season. We'll see. Just better than sitting in the house, right? Anytime you're hunting rather than doing something not hunting related like scouting or something, you're better off putting the time in. Because anything can happen. Time is a crucial ingredient in success. It's finally starting to stop raining. It was raining all the way back here, it finally stopped. Still sprinkling a little bit, hopefully it stays stopped. I've been seeing big buck tracks all the way back here leaving back to this bedding area and big rubs and uh, it's looking a lot better than I expected I mean there's a lot of sign coming out of here and uh, this late in the year no hunter sign I haven't been in this area all year but I've killed some monsters in here past years so um, I'm kind of excited to give this spot a try I wasn't as excited until I got back here and saw the tracks and the rubs and all that stuff it really looks like there's something big in here so Cross your fingers. All right, here's the area I think the deer are going to come from. I've hunted over there, not this year or even the year before, but a couple years ago I saw some good bucks come through right here, and I've shot in some real good bucks just over there. And this seems to be the core area they come from, and the sign is more over here now. So I'm going right here where everything kind of comes together. And uh, the only tree I had that could cover everything is this dead tree here. I got the stand up, uh, it's uh, eight feet up, three sticks. And uh, I can just shoot over to stuff and into there. And I'll just have to lay into the tree in order to blend. Okay, I'm in the tree. There's a main trail right there. Comes out of that crap along that transition up there. There's a main trail right here. There's a bunch of main trails coming through here. And this is where I seen a lot of the bucks when I hunted back there. So we'll see what happens. Time's running out though. I know there's a lot of sign coming out over there. It's hard to see in here. I can see some tracks on the ice, but it's hard to see more sign than that. I don't know what happened to that deer. He was walking down the transition towards me. It slipped into the trees about 50 yards from me. I don't know if it's still sitting in there or if it wandered off that way, but it never went through over there. It just seems to have disappeared. Maybe it'll still come out, I don't know. 
It's starting to snow pretty heavy. Buzz. It's closing time. Whatever I saw over there 45 minutes ago never came back out. Must have went that way. Not sure if it was a buck or a doe or what it was. I just got a glimpse of it. Hmm. Looking here, I see some really big tracks coming in and out. Right here. Going into here. The bedding's mostly down there, but sometimes they bed on that hillside. I got a wind that's coming like this right now. A lot of times they walk in, out along that stuff into there. A lot of times they come into here. Now this trail keeps going up here and coming out of there or there. But I'm thinking if I get in that tree right here, I can shoot over to that trail, over to this trail. And that should catch them totally off guard because we haven't hunted in there in years. But if I can get right in there where I can still hit this trail, like probably this tree here somewhere is just high enough that I can shoot over all that brush into the... I know there's a little bit of open stuff where they move in there from scouting last year. So, we'll give this a shot and see what happens. The wind's good. The only thing that's going to be a, a pain is those deer got to be really close right now. If they're in there and it's dead quiet. So I'm just going to have to take my time and really set up slow. But these tracks are big and there's a lot of them. So that's got me a little bit uh, pumped up. It took a long time to get in here and get this uh, set up and it's far from perfect. I'd much rather be where my camera arm is. I'd have a shot block through there. From here I can shoot through there. But I got this limb up my back and I'm in a permanent lean forward position. Kind of sucks, but when I'm standing to shoot, it'll be fine. So, uh, late season, a lot of times bucks bed up on that ridge, but they usually bed down in here. That uh, trail with the big buck tracks comes right through there. It looks like it kind of goes up to that ridge, and some of it goes down to here. Um, but there's so many tracks on it, it has to be in my opinion, probably near where they're living because they're not traveling a long ways going up the exact same trail in this field. I had a short amount of time after work, so I ran over to Dave's farm. And unbelievable, after getting a trespass warning, this guy's been back. See his footprints? Went right up to his farm. He literally got served a trespass warning and he's still coming back here. It's unbelievable. A little disappointed. The snow's been on the ground for one day. So all last night. And I didn't cut one deer track all the way back here. Too late to really go anywhere else. But there could be a deer in here that ends up coming out this way. So I'll sit tight and see what happens. Two squirrels and a raccoon. No deer. Snow's been on the ground overnight. Yesterday it was blowing right up until dark. So 
what I'm doing now is I'm running around and I'm scouting for deer tracks. Um, I checked a couple places already and um, both spots had good good sign, um, but I didn't get too deep. Um, we're expecting snow this morning again. Matter of fact, it's nine o'clock and they said it was going to start snowing at eight. So far, we got no snow, but I'm running out trying to get some stuff done um, before that snow hits here. And uh, I did get a call from somebody that was across the street from Dave's farm um, and saw a couple big bucks head to the farm, but one of them had already shed an antler. Um, so I'm going to go check on that. Uh, I did last week. I found some um, big tracks, big sign of. Uh, something big was down there um, then I hunted it and nothing came through but I had I had coyote hunted it the night before um, because we hadn't seen any deer in there in a, quite a while and I'd kind of given up so the coyote hunt might have been a mistake but now it seems like they, maybe they're back so if they're in there there should be tracks um, and if they went in there to bed this morning there should be tracks so uh, which is real quick, quick and simple to just go check for tracks and they're either there or they're not. It's kind of a bad win for a nerve, but maybe, maybe not, depending on how they're coming in and out of there. So it's definitely worth it to take a quick glance. But I want to, you know, we got three days left until the end of the season. I want to try and set myself up in the best spots I can. Back's against the wall, the buzzer's about to buzz. I think that's downfall of a lot of hunters is they just don't get out and do the scouting and go take a guess. And at this time of the year, it's as easy as looking at the tracks. Did one go in there in bed this morning or didn't it? So let's give her a shot. That's a fairly decent sized track, but it's kind of running. I don't know where it's going. I didn't see anything crossing the road up there. Yeah. This ain't running, it's walking. Here's a pretty good set of tracks here. Oh yeah. Nice. So I'm expecting they're bedded right over there if they're in here. The wind is supposed to be north today. Now where the guy saw the big bucks come in was up that tree line. And go in there and there's a bedding area right there and it can't get much further than that where they hit water. Um, or, or a huge pond. That I don't think they're crossing. They can cross up here. Um, but I think they're feeding in here by the looks of this. These are some decent tracks. They're not fawn tracks. There's tracks all over. Considering this has only been on the ground for one day. You know. So it's a matter of how they're coming in there. I should just take a walk along that edge. There's a good spot to hunt right over there. I gotta be kind of quiet. It's quiet out today. Even driving to this point might have been a mistake. But, uh, take a look around here. See what we got. Looks like they're just digging up dry grass. There's one one bedded for a while. Probably a night bed. There's another bed right there, night bed. There's a couple more night beds. Remember, we didn't have any, uh, the snow wasn't here yesterday. It was blowing snow covering everything right up until just before dark. So all the sign is fresh. So I walked the farm and I walked around the bedding areas 
And unfortunately, all the big buck tracks are coming from across the street. Uh, the two big bucks they saw come across the street that came over here, I'm assuming got kicked over here and they went back over when they were done. There are no tracks going into the bedding areas. Um, they only come onto the property for a couple hundred yards to eat in the bean field and then go back. So it's uh, on to the next spot. I gotta keep moving fast because the blizzard's starting to hit. We're starting to get the snow and I gotta see the sign. And I just found a rub that is incredible. I'm standing on frozen water. So this wasn't, you know, a deer would have been lower than this. There's about six inches of ice here, or water on ice. And right here, over the top of all this stuff, is this rub way up here. The center of that is equal with my rib cage. And I'm six foot uh, one. So that is a high rub with a long reach. A big buck did that. And I can see here scarring from last year. So uh, I'm doing a little scouting too. I found a spot over there and a spot over there. I'm, I'm going to hunt next year if we don't get this buck. So it's kind of a twofold scouting for now and for next year. That rub really uh, is interesting though. Where I think he's living is, is about two or three hundred yards that way, based on the maps I looked at and uh, hunting here once or twice years past. It's been a while since I've been in here though. And this is a tangle. Right away I recognize that that is too thick. Um, for a buck to get a rack the size of his rack through. Um, I assumed they were going along this transition and I found some small rubs over in there from a smaller buck and a couple of beds from early season and then coming over here now I spy a giant rub right there and this is just heading right back to where I believe that deer lives. Look at that rub. Wow. That's as big around as one of my legs, and it's waist high to the center. It's a good buck, it's probably him. And this trail just keeps going back to that bedding area that I'm thinking would hold him. Right beyond those trees over there is where I think he is. No tracks yet though. There's some food sources down there though. He might be coming out going like that. I'm not going to go in his bed and area right now. I'm just going to skirt it because right now I'm hunting. I think this is really good when these isolated oaks are the only oaks dropping around here. And early season just food that way. So. These trees here look like they'd be hell to climb to get a strap around, but if a guy could get right up in there, this ain't bad. There's a lot of trails coming through here, leading into private crops. And uh, I noticed the main trail coming through here from that bedding has a decent rub there. There's a little rub right here. This trail is just beaten. This isn't humans out here in this water. And uh, here's a rub here. It's got a lot of orange to it. <clears throat> See how orange that is? And I mean, it's not wet no more, but it's orange, meaning it wasn't that long ago. Probably after rut. There's, these branches are broke too. Then when you look on this side, this is rub, but it's dried up and brown. That's from last year, but it's from early season. This is from like September. This is like towards end of rut or something. It does look like there's a bed here, which is understandable. This is pretty thick earlier in the year. There's broken branches in here. See some rubs up there. Right there. Still within well range of that. Oh, look at that rub. That's a big rub. Right in a bed. Look at that. There's a 
bed right here. Actually, I think it's right there. It comes through here. Look at that rub. I mean, that is big and it's waist high again. That's him. That's him right under that tree. That's interesting. That's interesting. Finding all kinds of sign to kill him next year. But uh, not much for killing him today. Haven't cut his track yet. I'll keep looking, I got one more spot I want to check before the snow gets too out of hand. So there's that big rub right there. I can see another one in the background that I missed before. And I come over by these, and there's a decent one there. And come around the corner on the trail here. What do you think we find? A balloon. Yup. Do the purple ones have bigger bucks? I wonder. Here's a pretty big sized bed here with a lot of old rubs in it. See that? From last year though, but they're older. older. They're all dried up. Um, from September time because if you look some of you shine right in here But when this had leaves on it and all these cattails were up high This was a nice little hiding hole So you can look at that and you can say okay. He was here During September -ish, right when their antlers got hard That would be my bet Maybe up to the beginning of October, but as soon as it started settling down these leaves came off this willow brush. He was gone What's interesting is that this area right in here didn't used to be this thick. I haven't been in here in years. Now it's really thickened up. And it's pretty obvious to me that this is the hub of activity. Every time I come in here, there's just the whole transition of it is full of rubs and beds from big bucks. So I'm pretty sure early season that thing's living right in here. Which would make sense from where I was getting pictures and you know towards rut a lot in daylight. You know, right before rut, right after rut, during rut. If it was coming from right here, I could understand it getting to where my camera was in daylight. There's a big bed there, there's a big bed here. I can see an old rub right there. I look over here, there's a big bed there, and I can see a giant rub over the top of that. Right there. That's pretty fresh. And uh, there's other really big rubs I was finding were on that transition over there. And over there and everything surrounding this area. I like this a lot. Obviously the deer ain't here right now, but at least I know where to start for spring scouting. I wish I was cutting this track in here now. seems to be living around this chunk of dogwood and brush which is good for out here most of this crap is cattails and stuff at least there's some trees surrounding this that I can hunt it and I can get high enough I can see him through openings if he's in here I like this I like this a lot about uh, three quarters of a mile that way I uh Earlier this year, I had a couple of interactions with a real big buck, and there are a lot of deer back here. So I don't know a lot about this area. I've scouted it a couple times, so I, I know the gist of it, but uh, I haven't really hunted it a whole lot. So I'm kind of hunting my way back today. I got my bow and my stand on my back. I'm just making my way through here, and right now I'm following some big sign back. And uh, these big tracks come in here. You see where the deer worked up the ground here and actually worked on that rub. That's an old rub from earlier this year, but you can see he just recently worked on it. Going up this trail, it looks like there's a giant rub up here from a couple years ago on this track. Yeah, right, right there, that's a 
real old rub. A few years old. There's another one on that tree over there. But it shows you that uh, the history of big bucks in here. I mean, look at that trail going through there. It's not being used now, but that was a pretty good trail. You see a bed in there and a little hole. We gotta get back and find a lot more sign than this though. I know there's some good ones back here. I'm starting to run into a lot of sign, concentration. The problem is I've walked for a long time, I'm running out of time. I've been walking for well over an hour. It's gonna be fun getting out of here. But I'm close to where I need to set up, so I'm being really careful now. I think I'm gonna need to get right in here where I seen that big buck was over there. And my tendency is to believe he's coming out of there. And I got a lot of sign coming out of there. This trail is pretty heavy. It's another trail just like it right over here. So, uh, no human sign back here yet. So I'm feeling good about this. We're right here. We got a fresh work scrape. Right here, under these branches. Right on that heavy trail. This is looking better and better and better. Finding a tree in here to set up is going to be fun. I made it out here. I'm out quite a ways. I got the tree stand set up. I'm in a buckthorn jungle. There really ain't much for trees. I'm liking the only elm tree in the whole jungle of buckthorn. And uh, I had to struggle to find a tree. I set up about um, 100, 150 yards back that way and had a really big buck come through here during bow season. And it just seems to me that this is a remote area that's got some really good buck sign. And I'm thinking some big stuff lives back here and nobody's hunting it really. They're hunting it on the public or private around the outskirts, but nobody gets down into this junk jungle of buckthorn. And uh, I'm where everything comes together. There's some good sign here, but not near as much sign as there was when I came in here in early season. But uh, there's a heavy trail coming through here, heavy trail coming through there, another one coming around. There's a trail coming through here. There's one back here I don't think I'm gonna be able to shoot, maybe. But, uh, we'll see what happens. I made some noise getting in here. The wind ain't perfect. But, uh, steward die, I gotta give so many spots a try. It took so long to get back here that I only got about an hour and 15 minutes left of daylight, so. You see those big trees there? Those aren't that far away. They're like 75 yards. That's where, according to the onyx, I haven't walked over there, but it, it looks like there's grass and marsh that go into the private land up into the, their crop fields and, and their wood lots that are drier. And I think they're bedding between those trees and the far trees, so they're not that far away. So as a matter of fact, I kicked a couple up back in here, looping around to come in here. out of the swamp. At least I'm on the trail now. Coming out an easier way than I went in, but it's still a mile walk. It's one bad moon rising over there, eh? I don't know how it looks in the camera, but I think it's blood red. Kind of cool. I light my path and entertain me on the way back to the truck. I'm kind of hungry, so before we go out, I'm going to make a sandwich. I'm going to teach you guys how to make a salami sandwich. You're probably making it wrong. Most people make bread sandwiches. Really. So what you need is you need one of these single sandwich size um, salami packs. And 
some cheddar cheese, and two slices of bread. So I'm going to open up this uh, salami here. And what I'm going to do is I'm only going to use like half of it because I'm going to save save half of it for another sandwich. And I can do that because I'm going to use some cheese. So the cheese will make up for the other half and then I can actually get two sandwiches out of that little pack. See that's conserving. You gotta watch out, they put, they put paper in between these pieces of cheese. I mean, they know a guy's going to use a pile of cheese, right? Why would they put paper between it? Get yourself a good pile of cheese in there. Yeah, here we go. <laughs> there we go. You get that paper out from underneath there. Why would they put paper in cheese? Every now and then I grab a glob of it. And I don't see the paper. And that's just nasty. So here you go. Now that is a salami sandwich. <laughs> oh. <I'm good. laughs>